That's uh, drones in Bayelsa. Now we're going to talk about modular refineries in Nigeria. It's been said that more investment needs to go into modular refineries in Nigeria in order to improve uh, the sector as far as oil and gas downstream is concerned. So uh, joining us to discuss further is Captain Emmanuel Ehenacho. He's the CEO of Echo Refineries and Integrated Oil and Gas Limited. He's also the chair of the Board of Trustee Crude Oil Refinery Association of Nigeria. Captain Ehenacho, you're very welcome. Good morning to you. Thanks for joining and happy eat. <laughs> Thank you. Good morning. Uh, so, being here. fantastic. So can you help us out with the, the the business model for for modular refineries as far as you know the the the, the valuation case for them? Well, yes, it's really a very simple. Uh, first of all, let's talk about refineries as a whole. Refineries uh, produce oil, refined oil from crude oil, which serves our transportation system, which in turn helps us uh, move goods and services in our economy. Um, they produce uh, so many things that we use, really, that's the refineries. So um, the innovation that we are talking about at this point in time, which is having modular refineries, these are cheaper refineries and they are mo more easily installed and because of the limited state, uh, space requirements in their locations, they are the ideal thing to complement what we've been doing for so many years. You know we've had a, uh, four major refineries in Nigeria, two in Port Harcourt, one in Wari, and the one in Kaduna. They've never functioned. The only thing that is unique about them is that they are public sector owned. So now we have a situation where private sector uh, entrepreneurs who have the technical capacity, who have the know-how, and in cases have the resources, can actually produce the same thing that those refineries are set out to produce. So why don't we partner with them? If the government refineries had crude oil available to them, because this is something that's in common ownership of all Nigerians, give us that crude so that we can bring the technology in. We'll bring in our consultants. We'll build our modular refineries and we'll produce um, uh, crude oil that our economy needs to develop. Fantastic. Thank you for that. So I want to touch on something you just said. The four refineries that we have, their total capacity is 445,000. So modular refineries, by definition, aren't they smaller? Can, 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 are you saying we have the capacity to be able to enough, enough modular refineries that can match the outputs of those four state-owned refineries that are not producing? Well, let me uh, just address an issue that you have touched upon uh, tangentially. Why are we going to be aiming to produce enough fuel just to match the capacity that's there? Right. We can produce enough for us to use. We can produce enough for us to export to neighboring countries in West Africa. So why are we going to constrain ourselves? So modular refineries are absolutely unique when you talk about uh, the potentials that they have for trans uh, transforming an economy. They are cheap. They are easy to install. The space requirements are really limited. And really, that is the way for us to go. Mm -hmm. As far as the space being limited, how close do they need to be to where crude oil stock is or i mean is it do they have to be closer to the source or can they be further with pipelines connecting them how, how what's the logistics well there is a very uh, unique uh, situation in nigeria where we have what you call marginal fields which are fields that have been production fields that are no longer producing optimally but rather than discard them we can still get some people to go down and get whatever is there and refine this in addition to what is being produced by the major refineries. So um, modular refineries can be sited in close proximity to marginal fields. They can also be sited by the seaside because that is traditionally where refineries were built. Refineries were built traditionally by the seaside so that that will facilitate the delivery of a crude to uh, the refineries and the exportation of uh, the products of those uh, refineries. So there is no hard and fast rule there it is flexible enough for us to utilize so that we can then make those marginal fields that had been discarded there before, we make them much more productive. Mm. Uh, I, I really have to pick your brain on the removal of fuel subsidies. Um, I guess how, I mean, you're, but marginal, I mean, modular refineries, that's more upstream, yes? I, are you with any, are modular refineries in any way, the sector uh, impacted by the removal of, of fuel subsidies at all? It has absolutely uh, pointed out the imperatives of us investing in modular refineries. Fuel subsidy was a completely wasted uh, policy 
where monies were targeted, supposedly targeted at uh, poor Nigerians, but actually ended up being appropriated by people who had enough resources to afford the fuel that was being distributed. Again, of course, there were lots and lots of beneficiaries on either side of the country who uh, participated in the illicit trade of buying uh, subsidized fuel that was meant for Nigerian consumption. So, um, if anything, the removal of a fuel subsidy has absolutely pointed out the need for us to have more refineries, more stick-built refineries, more modular refineries, and we must not constrain ourselves by saying we want to be able to match the 450 or 480,000 barrels per day uh, capacity of the old refineries. That is not the case. Let me uh, give you an example of the sort of numbers that we really should be looking at. America is about one and a half times our size. How many refineries do you think they have? Mm -hmm. 139 refineries. Wow. Texas, a city that you can compare to Lagos in terms of size and population. How many refineries does it have? 32 refineries. So in the whole of the Federal Republic, we only had four refineries and they never worked because they were predominantly in public sector ownership. And if anything had been proven by their non-performance, is the fact that they, everybody's business is nobody's business. So we really now must opt for a situation where the ingenuity of the private sector entrepreneurs is brought to bear in a union where that crude that was reserved for NNPC or its share of the production is now given to modular refinery operators. Mm. And off we go. Fantastic. Speaking of off we go, the Dangote refinery, I have to ask you about that. Speaking of this fixation on production, that's 650,000 uh, production capacity. Yeah. So much attention has been put on it. So you're, you would say that it doesn't have to be just about that. There's more. Completely and totally unnecessary. Mm. Because we are fixated with the Dangote's 400, 650 um, barrels bar per yeah, day. Yeah. Have we asked him what he intends to do with the output? Is he going to sell it predominantly or exclusively in Nigeria? Would he export a proportion of it or would he export everything? So we keep on making conjectures without referring to the person who built the refinery. Mm. We should ask him. But to my mind, even if we build two times the capacity of Dangote refinery, there is a market for them because you will export. If you meet the technical specifications, you will export to Europe, you will export to all these uh, small countries in West Africa that end up buying uh, uh, products from, from Rotterdam. So we really should be striving to increase our technology base and build as many refineries as possible. The word hub comes to say, let us make ourselves a hub for petroleum products and trade there in West Africa. Fantastic. Uh, my final question to you. What do you make of the whole energy transition debates? Um, Nigeria is a fossil fuel dependent nation. The move to more climate friendly, renewable energy, would that threaten um, your sector? Why would it threaten? I mean, look at what is happening everywhere else. The transition is not we are moving and then we get to one point and the transition happens. It's something that happens gradually. We have to join at some point in time. So we have to join at the point where we are still exploring, exploiting and using fossil fuels. And if at some point in the future it becomes the norm that we don't use fossil fuels anymore, we turn to renewables, we will make that transition. But we could not say we're going to sit down here and determine the point at which that transition is going to be made, and then we we'll jump on board. It will be too late for us at that time. Fantastic. Okay, I said final question, but this is such a great conversation. Let me squeeze one more question out of you. Um, what's, the, what's the engagement going to be like with this new administration? Do you think you can, I think it's the NMDPRA or so, the, the regulators, to get more refineries out in Nigeria? What's your... Well, the engagement is already started because we had an engagement with the uh, former Honorable Minister of Petroleum Resources, uh, Timmy Press Silva. Yeah. And we were really uh, pleased that he understood the, the strategic imperatives for Nigeria of investing in uh, modular refineries. And one of the things that uh, he had done, he had established a number of uh, committees, one to look at the issue of crude oil availability, and the other one to look at the issue which bedevils most of those things that we try to do, availability of funding, because local banks really are not sufficiently capitalized to fund them. So, the move is there. Even a white paper has actually been drawn up to say that this has to be done 
and look at what we want to achieve over, achieve over time. Mm. So what I think the new administration would do would be to absolutely have a look at the um, files, look at the record of uh, the proceedings in the meetings that we have had, and then go forward and implement those things very speedily. There's absolutely no reason why we could continue to drag our feet. Modular refineries are the way to go. They will complement any stick-built refineries that uh, become established, but all in all, modular refineries, stick-built refineries, if they are Nigerian refineries, they have a market out there for their outputs. Fantastic conversation, sir. Our thanks to Mr. Uh, Captain Emmanuel Hihinacho, CEO, Eco Refineries and Integrated Oil and Gas, also the chair of the Board of Trustee, Crude Oil Refinery Association of Nigeria. Thank you for a very informative conversation. And Thank you very year. much. It's been a pleasure talking to you. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. You're watching.